Um, my name is Jorge Gutierrez. I'm a queer and documented Mexicano. I was born in the beautiful city of Nayarit and a very small rancho named El Cora. Um, I grew up there till I was 10 years old. Um, and then I came over with my mother and my four siblings. Um, and we ended up uh, residing in Orange County up until pizza joint. And it was a Saturday afternoon. I think like I, I got off at 2 p.m. I remember all of these details. Um, and she picked me up. Um, and then we were coming to our red light on 17th and Main Street in Santana. Um, and it was like the longest red light of my life. Uh, and you know there was some banda music in the background. And she turns it off. And it's one of those moments where something's coming at you. You don't know what it is. Uh, but something's coming, right? And very dramatic, like the novela style. Um, you know? Um, and then she looks over at me and she tells me, you know, Mijo, te gustan las niñas o las niñas? Do you like boys or girls? Um, well, you know, boys back then, I like men now. <laughs> and so, um, you know, and for a moment I thought about lying say you know i like me gustan las niñas i like girls only because i remember how violent my dad had been you know towards me and for you know for me even not knowing who i was but my dad i guess he already saw right that there was something different about me he didn't like it and so um all that came back to me and you know and i thought a few seconds about you know not about lying but you know i was like no i gotta stay true to myself and as long as i do that everything will be okay and so i tell her you know me gustan, me gustan los niños um then the, the light turn, finally turned green uh and then she pulls into the nearest you know parking lot very dramatic you know and here like um and then she tells me to get to get off the car and here i am and you know I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to get zoned. I'm in my uniform. This is not cute. Um, but, you know, she gets off the car as well and, you know, uh, turns around the car and comes to me, you know, with, you know, tears in her eyes. In her eyes and, and she tells me, um, a lo mejor no puedo entender esto, pero lo vamos a sobrepasar con, con mucho amor. Y, y yo te quiero, tú eres mi hijo. Um, y como madre, lo único que puedo hacer es amarte. And so, for her to tell me those words when I was 17 years old, I really feel she clipped a pair of wings on my back and I was able to really embrace uh, my identity as gay and to not be ashamed of that. Um, and, you know, my mom is really fierce, you know, I, I don't know way, right, that growing up, you know, I think HIV um, instilled a lot of fear um, um, in me, right, and, and so when I started getting sexually active, right, um, that was always be behind my head, right, on the back of my mind, and, and it really didn't allow me to really enjoy those moments, right, um, um, and so as opposed to, you know, being an opportunity for education and say, take care of yourself, this is how you do it. It was more of like, if you do this, then you're more likely to have HIV, right? Um, and so this, this whole disconnection of, you know, um, and I feel like a lot of shaming went into that, right? And it took me a couple of years to be able to say, this is my body and I want to celebrate it and I want to be healthy and I want to take care of it, um, you know, in a way that allows me to fully participate, you know, in the sexual activities where I'm in control of my body, right? Um, and it's, I'm not allowing this sort of uh, information for mainstream public, right, that tells me just because I'm gay that I'm more likely to get HIV, right? But I was able to really reclaim that and say, like, no, like, this is my body. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to use protection, and I'm going to enjoy what I do. Um, and so I think it took me a couple of years to get to that moment. Um, and I think that's a lot of us, you know, especially a lot of, like, um, LGBT immigrant uh, youth, right? We go through a lot of these things. A lot of the information comes from, you know, um, sort of a second uh, source and, and it doesn't come from people like ourselves being able to have these conversations right and say like hey this is my experience this is how I came into terms about this uh, and that's how we should be looking out for each other right um, and making sure that we're able to celebrate our identities as queer people and, and really get rid of the shame and fear that is so often you know part of our identities. So to those you know LGBT immigrant youth you know you're beautiful and fierce um, and and as you come out, you know, remember that our coming out experiences are very different and unique. That for us, when we talk about coming out, you know, we need to talk about our mothers and our sisters and our fathers and our community. For us, it's not just one single, it's about me, it's about our whole community coming, you know, coming out with you. Um, and so that, you know, always keep that in mind and don't let that shame you um, and don't let that make you think that you're inferior. Um, we are beautiful brown people. and. Um, and that we can be fierce, you know, on the dance floor and outside the dance floor. Um, and we need to build community, come together, come out to each other for each other, and really celebrate our humanity, our queerness. Um, and I always go back to someone telling me, right, um, in this world of oppression and discrimination, uh, we will never be queer enough. So uh, I invite all of you, right, to tap into those identities and be who you need to be, say what you need to say, and that there's a whole community behind you.